less than 10 minutes. So feel free to bring your props. Um, we don't have any announcements today from ACC, but uh, let's see. If you're new to yoga, you've never taken the class before, I suggest you kind of take it slow. You can explore each of the cues as it feels right in your body. So if at any time something isn't feeling right, you're not obligated to move forward with that, um, that pose or that suggested. You can always just stand if we're doing the stand-up uh, poses, or you can rest in child's pose or just laying on your back, whichever is more comfortable. Um, even seated if we're still uh, doing some breathing med meditation, but you can always rest and join up with the practice once you feel more you know, intuitive about it, if it speaks to you. Um, also, it's been a lot warmer than usual, so if you have some water nearby that uh, we may take some breaks in between. Grabbing a good quick uh, gulp of water is nice. And with that in mind, we still have a little bit of time. Today's class, um, Gentle Yoga, we're just basically having a warm-up session for the first five minutes just to get uh, the joints lubricated, just see how we're feeling. But, um, we'll have a very modified sun salutation after that. Instead of a chaturanga, um, we'll just be moving from a high plank directly to our down dog. And if you have any wrist or shoulder issues, um, you can always just skip that and come all the way back up and continue to do uh, the half lift and um, forward fold sort of mini uh, process flow that is just going to eliminate any you know pressure to the shoulders or to the wrists if you have that. Um, let's see, in addition to that, bringing any props like blocks or a strap to help meet the distance when we're folding. If you're somewhere up here, sometimes it feels nice to have the gravity help you to release you know muscles in this forward fold that we're trying to relax. But sometimes if you have your hands, for instance, on some blocks, sometimes it helps to have a little bit of support. And it'll actually help you to release a little closer towards the floor, all those muscles that are kind of so tight. And they just need to have a little support sometimes for your body to feel like it's safe to release the muscles. It's just a self-protective sort of reflex. So having some blocks, having a strap, some blankets nearby and also a bolster if that's a part of your practice but um, we'll cue for those uh, those props just keep them nearby either at the top or the back of the mat let's see how much more time we have just a few more I'll take off my socks here drink a little more water have your audio on um, you know if you need to shout out to me or something I can stop and try to figure out uh, you know what cue might be helpful but everyone's thumbnail is kind of tiny so you know if it's a pretty um, you know unsafe move that you're feeling you're making I would say stop but you know you can always call out and I can run up to the screen really quick um, sometime to, to see if it's uh, something that we can address immediately but if not keeping the audio off 
until the end of class and I'll have about you know five minutes to 15 20 minutes as long as you need to answer any questions that you might have coming up through practice I'm always here afterwards if you have any questions comments or feedback so um, I guess that being said yeah just not an issue if, again something doesn't feel right could be something you did earlier in the week maybe it's just this pose is not speaking to you and so you you don't have to do it if it's not working for you that's always something to honor is how your body is feeling that moment um, and uh, I guess that with that said we're gonna go ahead and start is it okay to start right now or is there still a couple more minutes uh, we do have three, more minutes. three more minutes okay well, then I'm just going to relax and start to breathe a little bit. We do have a little bit more time, a couple more minutes here. If you want to talk, if you want to say, we have a couple of minutes. I'm informed by our, our trusty um, video filmmaker here. So if you have any questions, um, yeah, I should be able to hear them, right? So aside from that, oh, today's classes, um, the part that kind of changes with each class is uh, the latter half of the class. Some of the warm-ups uh, that we're doing is almost always the same warm-ups. It's almost always the same, um, you know, sun salutation that's modified, but the rest of the class. Today we'll be doing some forward folds, wide-legged, um, moving some upper body muscles. So, uh, you know, imagine you'll be doing some squats, some goddess squats and just some uh, maybe perhaps a triangle or um, you know uh, something in the variation of that uh, warrior two warrior one so those are the poses we'll be going through as we make our way down to the floor and then we'll probably end up with um, a couple spinal twists at the end um, but aside from that we're doing pr primarily stretching of the lower back um, the usual suspects with major uh, muscle groups with our sun salutation flow. It's just basically to get it, uh, get our, our system, our circulation running a little bit. There's a comment in the chat. There's a comment. Oh, oh, okay. What does this say? And this is from Betty Ang to everyone. I have pain in both knees and difficult to get up and down onto a mat. Can you? Can your yoga be adaptive for sitting position? Yes, yes it can. Um, the part that we're doing while we're standing, warming up, should be okay. Doesn't require getting down on the knees. However, the part where we're actually moving down to the floor, you won't be asked to come back up. So hopefully that will help any up and down movements uh, that you may have issue with for your knees. Um, if when we're down on the floor and we require to be on a tabletop, yes? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Hello? Is, is that Ava? Or, oh, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that part. I was about to turn off the music too, but um, you can always place a mat underneath the knees. That kind of helps. Um, when we have, after class, I can talk to you specifically about how to do the sun salutations from just a sitting position. Uh, that would require um, a little more one-on-one uh, -on -one time, but I'd be more than happy to show you that. You can do these things on the floor where you're just basically uh, bending at the hips to do a lot of the folds instead of standing going down into a fold. You would be sitting and basically folding the torso over the legs. So that being said, we'll go ahead and start. And I think that was Betty Ang. I'll definitely talk to you after class. So for now, all right, let's go ahead and begin at the back of the mat. As we're arriving, you can set your intention if you have one, or you can just sit, stand, excuse me, at the back of the mat in our mountain position. And as you're returning to this pose, um, just know that your mountain might get a little taller as your legs become a little longer, a little straighter, supporting the body as the back becomes a little 
taller, a little straighter. So just something to think about if the backs of the legs are really tight, just go ahead and bend the knees, have a micro bend or even a deep bend if you need something to help with that tightness. And then as we're standing, just noticing the breath. You might feel the mat under the feet. You might be feeling the heartbeat in the chest. And just slowing down with a soft gaze. So as we become a little quieter, the breath length may lengthen to about four to five seconds. As we start to inhale with a little more control, you may feel the top of the inhale, your collarbones are lifting. A brief pause before you start the slow exhale. With that bit of control and releasing the air through the nose, bottom of the exhale, just gently engaging the belly. You might draw the belly button towards the spine. Then with that brief pause before you start the breath cycle over again. So now with a longer breath, we'll cultivate that ujjayi breath. Something akin to hearing a sigh the back of the throat, feeling expansive, as if air is really just passing over the voice box and you can hear something like a wave or a sigh at the back of the throat on both the inhales as well as the exhales. So with the ujjayi breath cultivated, something you can connect through all throughout your practice. We'll go ahead and put that in your yoga toolbox. Let's go ahead and bring some movement with the breath. Let's lift our toes, lift the heels, start to feel the rocking sensation under the feet, feeling that weight rolling. And then we'll go ahead and intentionally inhaling slowly, feeling as if you're drawing energy from the legs, from the feet, from the legs all the way up the back through the crown of the head. And then as you exhale, allow the shoulders to relax and allow the belly to engage. Palms facing forward. Let's slowly inhale, leading with the chest. Feel the uh, weight roll at the bottom of the feet towards the toes until you feel as if you're about to tip over. Once you find that edge, hopefully at the top of that inhale, Let's go ahead and start to slowly roll the weight using the next breath until we feel the weight in our heels and again to that edge. Begin using the next few breaths to find that forward to back center of gravity as it rolls through the soles of the feet and keeping the breath through the nose. We'll meet somewhere back at center after a couple of rounds here. Just sink back into the mountain. And to reset, we're going to just feel a little taller, lengthen through the legs, the back, the neck, crown of the head. And then with that lift still there, let's go ahead and exhale, slowly shift the weight towards the outer right edges of the soles of the feet. We can inhale back up to center completely and then exhale over, or just inhale all the way to the other side. Use either a two-part breath of inhaling to one side and exhaling to the other, or you can inhale to the center and then exhale to either side. And after you've done that a few times, we'll meet back at center. See if you can keep your body as upright as possible. Settling back into our mountain, let's reset it. Inhaling nice and tall, lifting through the crown of the head. We'll make small circles in one direction. And it's almost as if we're a big, tall wooden spoon stirring a pot, keeping contact at the bottom of the pot there, if you will, finding that edge so that we can identify the perimeter of the soles of the feet. And then once you've done that, you can go ahead and tighten in those circles. We'll meet back at center, 
Resetting into the mountain, inhaling tall, making small circles now in the opposite direction. And hopefully you're getting a smoother transition. But if it's really tight on one side than the other, it might be a little choppier. Just something to notice. We'll tighten in the circles and meet back at center like water going down the drain. Okay, let's go ahead and come on up to our uh, hip uh, rotations and momentum swings. We're basically standing taller in our mountain, just pouring some weight into our left standing leg, feeling as if we're just stacking everything in one big column of support so that we can lift the right foot, just slightly hovering it with a flexed foot. If you can maintain that slight balance, see if you can, and you might have to tap down every now and then, but see if you can swing the leg as one unit forward and back. We're getting that hip joint on the right to hopefully make the movement front to back, forward and back of the midline. And then letting that right foot land gently. Let's go ahead and bounce a little bit. We'll pour some weight once more into the left standing leg, nice and tall. And then we're going to inhale, lift the right foot, bending the right knee more towards the inner, then rotating towards the outer area of the foot and the leg, right side. Inhale tall, bring the rotation towards the inner thigh and move it towards the outer thigh with a hip rotation. We'll do that about four times. And as you find that movement is available to you, you can speed up that rotation. After about four, we'll go ahead and move from the outside to the inner direction of the rotation on this right side. And if that feels good, we can speed that up. We're just trying to make sure we find that movement nice and open in the right hip. Let's go ahead and be tall in our mountain once more, pouring weight now into our right standing leg, lifting the left foot, flexing the foot just slightly so we can hover that foot, finding that balance. Let's just swing it forward and back. We have a midline that we're going front of and in back of, if you can see where my left hand is. That's this vertical, that's this plane of the body in this direction here. We just want to see if we can get that left hip to move front and back and then allow it to land. That was a little longer than I usually spend there too, by the way, but if that felt good to you, feel free to do more of that later. Now, we're going to stand tall in our mountain, pouring weight right back into this right leg once more, and then we'll lift the left foot and bending the left knee, we're going from an inner to an outer rotation of the left hip. We'll do that about four times. And as, again, that space is available in the hip, we can make the movement a little bigger if that feels good. Now we'll reverse our direction. We'll stand tall in the right leg again, and then lifting the left foot, outer to inner rotation of the hip. Slightly moving it for me, it's my tighter side, getting a little bigger in my rotation as I find that is available. And then just to unleash any uh, hidden tension, any hidden activation we forgot to let go of, you can just bounce, just jiggle a little bit. We'll move on up the body towards the shoulders. So palms facing forward, should be a little taller in our mountain. And as we're lifting up through the crown of the head, feeling as if there's a gentle tuck of the chin and a string pulling up through the crown of the head. Let's go ahead and inhale, shoulders lift directly up. Exhale, allow the shoulders to rotate back and just melt down the back. We'll do three more of those. And see if you can inhale lifting and exhale to release just that movement in the shoulders. See if the points of the shoulder blades, the very bottom, can tuck into the mid back. We just want our arms to be nice and relaxed like little noodles. Well, the rotation is simply in the shoulders. After doing about four of them, rolling back on the exhale, let's do another round. But this time, inhaling up, we're going to roll forward and down on the exhale. So this time, the rolls are forward on the exhale. And hopefully getting a better idea of how our shoulders are feeling this afternoon. And remember, at the bottom of the exhale, it's always a great time to just revisit that core, slightly engaged. And we'll go ahead and move all the way up to the neck. Here's our last warm up. We're, again, 
energizing through mountain, through the crown of the head. And then exhale, just let the right ear dip towards the right shoulder. Left shoulder and right shoulder are in line. And if the left shoulder lifted, go ahead and exhale, bring it on back in line with the right shoulder. When you're inhaling, feel as if uh, you might feel even the chest lift at the top of the inhale. But there's that nice length and then the exhale is so good for turning the gaze, feeling that extra stretch, seeing if you're holding any muscles you don't need to hold to keep this general form such that you can find a nice release to the left side of the neck. Maybe at the very bottom of your fourth breath cycle, your eyes might land on the rightmost of your shoulder vision. Maybe the vision is past the shoulder. Maybe you can land your eyes behind the shoulder. Wherever it may be, it's just a little more release with just landing the gaze and the eyes. Let's go ahead with the next inhale, bring the eyes back into the gaze. The gaze turns, the head lifts all the way up at the top of the inhale so that you just dip on over to the other side. Feel that nice long length, space about the size of an orange underneath the left ear. Inhale, the chest lifts, exhale, turn the gaze. See if you can realign the shoulders, hips, feet, in case anything on the right side lifted while you turn to the left side. And after your very last inhale and exhale, we'll go ahead and bring the eyes back into the gaze. The gaze turns and the head lifts completely at the top of the inhale and then allow the eyes to roll downward, leading the gaze to land somewhere at about the top of your mat. Feel that nice long length to the back of the neck. And when you're breathing, maybe there's a slight diagonal lift with that inhale as you lengthen, and the exhale of just releasing the shoulders down the back while you're still engaging only those muscles you need to keep upright. Palms facing forward. And after your last breath cycle, allow the eyes to lead the gaze back to the midline, past the midline, rolling the eyes above you, stopping when you look above you, and keeping some uh, length in the neck without craning the back. We want to feel an opening to the front of the throat, and you might be able to facilitate a release in those muscles, even the tongue those muscles in the jawline by simply opening the mouth to a small O, enlarging it to a larger O. You can loll out the tongue. Ah. You could even sway the jaw from left to right. Breathing deeply, let's go ahead and bring the gaze back to center. And just get rid of, shake out any tension in the feet, in the legs, shoulders. You can go ahead and just release it and then come back to our mountain once more. We'll start with our first fold. So feeling nice and tall in our mountain, let's go ahead and start reaching down towards the mat with our fingers. And then inhale, elevate the arms as we're still reaching. And by the time the hands are above the head, maybe even the torso could lift at the top of the inhale. And then exhale, engage the core. Start to bend at the knees if you need. But coming down halfway, you might need to bring the hands to walk down the thigh and chin, avoiding the knees, and just let the back unfurl, unfold. And wherever your hands may land, maybe you need more of the uh, forearms resting on the thighs to help. If you feel like you're tipping forward, roll some weight towards the heels. Hopefully you're feeling that center of gravity from the hip bones all the way down to the hips so that as you lengthen through the legs, as it becomes available to you, you'll have eventually a, a nice uh, support from the tailbone down to the heels. And you can just let everything in the back and the neck and the head just hopefully relax and let gravity help traction and bring some release to the spine and the neck. If your hands are touching the mat, you can simply um, open up the shoulder area by bringing the palms to face forward, fingertips towards the center area. And that helps to rotate the shoulders away from the ears. 
And if you're finding that it's really hard on the backs of the legs, you can have a deeper bend to the knees. But as you test it out, you can go ahead and bend one knee and then bend the other. And that'll help to lengthen through the legs. Feel where the support is on your feet as well. Are you rolling out towards the outer edges? Are you rolling in towards the inner arches? You want to have a nice, even distribution of the weight and with more of the weight towards the heels, towards the top of the ankles. And then with the next slow inhale, we're going to start to unfurl and come back to mountain. Let's press into our feet, engage the thighs, the core. We're slowly unfolding. Halfway up, you can walk the hands if that helps you, but we're really just nice and relaxed, unfurling the spine so that by the time we're standing, the head is the last to stack on top of the neck. Let the shoulders relax down the back, palms facing forward, and hopefully just give yourself a breath or, breath or two to let the blood rush back to the head. Let's go ahead and one, have one more fold, this time a, a little shorter, but we're still going to energize our fingers towards the floor while we elevate the arms above our head on the inhale. And then exhale. Let's hinge at the hips. If you can float all the way down, go ahead. Otherwise, walk your hands down to our fold. We're only keeping three breaths here. So you can rock the sacrum from side to side. You can gently nod your head no, nod your head yes, and then just let it go. See if you can have your head just dangling there like a plum weight. You can lift up the toes if that feels good too. And then with the next inhale, we're just going to extend through the arms. You can come all the way back up with the next strong inhale or walk the hands up, but engage the core first. So pressing into the feet, engaging the core. Let's go ahead and inhale, lengthening, walking hands up if we need to, or just powering all the way up. Looking at the hands, let's go ahead and bring the hands down, heart center, relax shoulders, relax to elbows at the side of the rib cage. We'll inhale left leg as our support leg and lift up the right foot. Bring down the right heel, ball of foot and toes with the exhale. Inhale, left foot up. Exhale, the left heel, ball of foot and toes down. Inhale, right foot up. Exhale, right heel, ball of foot toes down. It's a slow walking meditation and as it's one breath cycle per step of the foot and walking slowly if you feel wobbly you can always press into the hands engaging the, the core slightly to help keep the balance. At the top of the mat let's look at our fingertips watching the fingertips rise. Let's go ahead and lift the hands up at the top of the inhale, let's separate the hands. Exhale, hinge at the hips. Micro bend the knees if you need. Float on down to the floor. Hands down to the floor. Let's inhale. We're going to just lengthen through the legs. It's like you're spinning the sits bones back, lengthening from the hips all the way down to the heels for our uh, center of support and also from the tailbone all the way up the back, through the neck, through the crown of the head. And we're looking directly down at the floor. Let's go ahead, exhale, you can bend the elbows, bend the knees if you need, and come back to your fold. Fully exhaled here. Let's bring our hands to either side of the mat, of our feet, and we're going to step the right leg back. Inhale, let's step the left leg back and rotating shoulders away from the ears. We're pressing into the arms, bringing the knees down and feeling the tops of our feet meet the mat. You can keep the toes tucked if you need to, but just stand um, in this modified high plank. We're just going to feel the openness of the shoulders, bringing the hands to be nice and splayed. Index and middle finger is up above towards the top of the mat. And then let's go ahead, tuck the toes, lift up the hips with the inhale. Exhale, press the hips back to our down dog. We'll go ahead and step left knee down, or bend one knee, left heel up, right heel down. And then you can alternately walk each leg, bending each knee, walking your dog. And we're here for about five good breath cycles. So giving yourself some time, 
We're just pressing into our hands, feeling that openness in the upper shoulders. And hopefully your ears are somewhere in between your arms and the heels do not need to be on the mat. They can be lifted. But as you inhale and roll to the tips of the toes, feel if, as if you're carving out the core and then pressing those heels downward as is available to you. You may find that they meet the mat eventually over the course of time, if not now. And then with the next inhale, we'll go ahead and look to the hands and walk the hands. Bend the knees if you need to. Walk the hands to the feet. Step back to the back of the mat if you find yourself at the middle of the mat. Let's inhale for a half lift. And that's just lengthening from the tailbone through the crown of the head, as well as the hips to the floor. And then exhale to fold, carving out the belly. Fully exhaled here. Let's press into our feet, extend those arms. And you can inhale all the way back up or walk your hands up. Exhaling hands down, heart center. Prepare for our last Walking meditation, inhale, lift the right foot, pressing into the hands for stability. Exhale, the right heel, ball of foot and toes down. Inhale, left foot up. Exhale, left foot down. Engage the core to help keep the balance. See if you can make it one breath per step. and relax shoulders at the top of the mat. Let's look at the fingertips, pressing into the palms. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, separate the palms, hinging at the hips. Exhale for fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, plant the hands, step the right foot, left foot back. Inhale those shoulders over the wrist and stay here for two breaths. See if you can feel that length from the heels all the way through the crown of the head. You can lift up the hips higher than the hypotenuse. That's okay. It's keeping nice and strong in the arms. And then exhale. Let's go ahead and lift up the hips, pushing back into our arms, bringing the heels down for a down dog or hovering above the mat. It's okay, your version of dog. Give yourself a nice walk of each alternate leg bend. And then one more inhale, pressing up the hips, coming up to the tippy toes. Exhale, press into the heels. Come on down one last time for dog. And then we'll inhale the hands back to the feet at the back of the mat. Fully exhaled in our fold. Let's inhale, half lift, exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way back up. Exhaling hands down heart center and finally down to the side. Just give yourself a breath. Maybe you can feel the heart beating and maybe it's a good time for a little drink of water. We'll be moving into our standing exercise of tree. And you know, if you recall um, one of our last classes, we stood on a brick to help us to feel stacking um, sensations of the left side or right side of the body as we're going into a tree. So, uh, you know, you feel free to get on the mat if you're still feeling that um, difficulty in engaging those muscles. You do want a nice stable block, like a firm foam block or a, a core or even a wooden one is great. But you're feeling, hopefully when you stand on it, how the muscles should be stacked, how the joints should be stacked underneath each other, which muscles should be engaged, so that all you have is this strong column of support on one side of the body without jutting out the hip. And that's all you're looking for. So once you can do that, you're kind of using the tips of the left foot or the other foot that does not have the block to kind of help you balance. And once you're feeling that that's there, you should be able to just flex that foot and have it in that same horizontal plane. And that gives you an idea. When you're ready to come down, bring the toes back to contact the mat, and then bend the right knee, or bend the knee that's over the block. And then you can safely come down, moving that block away. And coming right back into our tree, you'll feel the muscle memory is still there. 
you should be able to just engage the muscles and feel that nice support without jutting out the hips in order to get onto the right leg as your standing support. So here, we can inhale the left heel up and externally rotate that hip. It may not be that open, so you might have your knee uh, at an angle instead of in the same line, uh, almost like perpendicular from the, the body at some angle. That's the classical pose, but for the majority of us, having our knee at an angle is just fine. So don't worry too much about it. We're working towards opening the hip as we're rotated out on that side. So once you're feeling stable there at the tripod, you can bring the hands to heart center, and you can just breathe. Here we're just trying to find the stability of tree, feeling as if you're drawing that energy and just using those muscles needed to keep steady and breathing five good deep breath cycles from that point. Once the upper body and the bottom are just balanced, you can focus on the breath. See if you can hear the ocean at the back of the throat. Slight lifting of the collarbones and more of an engagement of the core with each bottom of the exhale. When you're ready to come out, start from the hands, releasing from the hands, internally rotating the left hip, letting that left foot land. And your right glutes and legs should be really nice and tight. It's been working to support you through those two poses, that initial tree as well as our regular non-block supported tree. So let it go, kicking forward and to the side before you cross your midline will help avoid hopefully any injury of tight glutes so as medials. So let's go ahead and start on the other side now. Coming over to this side getting on your block if that's what you did or you could just go into your tree if you already have a good stable trunk and all we're doing here is just setting up our tree for the first round on the left side now pouring weight into that left standing leg and once you're feeling stable if you're on the block you can just go ahead and flex the foot have it hovering so that you can feel the engagement of the left side of the body That's usually about three breath cycles there. And when you're ready to come down, bringing that tip of the toes of the other foot onto the mat, bending the left knee, and then letting the right mat foot land. And then you can get rid of that block. Just move straight into tree with the left standing leg. Inhaling long. Exhaling to stabilize and then you can inhale the right foot up externally rotate with an exhale and then bring the right heel to the rest on the left ankle once that bottom portion of the foundation of tree is settled then you can go ahead and bring the upper body into play and remember we're trying to open up this right side of the body while feeling just stable nice and supported in this tree and the opening of the right hip. A soft gaze, you're not really staring at anything. And releasing the hand, and then internally rotating the right hip before we land the right leg. And maybe the left leg didn't have to work as hard. Maybe it had to work twice as hard. Notice how it feels, if there's any difference. And then we'll go ahead and uh, move into an open, a wide-legged forward fold stance. So we'll be moving into a squat from here later. So if your blocks are nearby, if they're not, go ahead and bring them nearby. But if your blocks are nearby, you want them probably off the mat, somewhere in forward fold position that you can reach just above your feet. Now, checking out the wide-legged stance distance, it's usually about 
three to four feet for the average person. But if you have really super tight uh, hips, two to three feet is probably a good uh, indicator. That's about two tiles that I always judge by uh, here in the community room. And then if you notice if you're having difficulty with knees needing to bend, and that's just something that is having to do with the tightness in the knee and the hip joints. So sometimes it can be um, worked through with just some time. Again, sometimes your body feels that it's tightening up because it's just not sure how stable a new position might be. So giving it a little bit of time to feel safe. You can notice if that is indeed your edge. But as we're lengthening through the legs, what we're trying to find is, again, your feet. Are, are they rolling more of the weight and support towards the outer edge? Are you weighing in more? With more of the weight towards the inner arches, you might find a bent knee um, positioning of the legs. So we're trying to lengthen through that. So you're really wanting to have flat feet, support on all points of the feet, just coming uh, down directly. And then as they're wide, you may find that your ankles will go in a little bit, and that's okay. But we still want to have our feet basically just resting without feeling rolling out or rolling in of the weight underneath the soles of the feet. Once that's good, we'll go ahead and bring our hands here nice and long. If you've noticed that you've got your body tilting towards the front, if the chest is leading towards the front, just see if you can bring the shoulders to stack above the hips. From the side, it may look a little bit like this when we start, and we're just starting to lengthen, starting to straighten out, tucking under the tailbone, pressing the hips forward just slightly so we have good stability here. And then we can bring our hands to the hips, and then with the next inhale, drawing that energy from our feet, feeling as if the crown of the head has a string lifting up. We're going to hinge just at the hips, let the hips move back slightly and start to lead into the fold. So we're halfway down, we may need to walk the hands down. You may need your blocks somewhere here. I'm just gonna turn at this point. So if you come to where your blocks are, you can have your hands here. We're slowly trying to bring our chest closer towards the thigh, towards the floor. So we may have a process we're going through. You may need to rest your forearms on the highest setting of your blocks you might be able to play with the setting of the blocks. But eventually, all we're trying to find is a nice fold with the legs in a wide-legged stance. And you're going to feel, hopefully, the center of gravity more towards the heels, not towards the toes. If you have that feeling of hyperextending the back of the knees, bend the knees a little bit. It's probably really super tight. You might have to play with the positioning of the torso as well. Maybe not go as deeply into the fold. But when you find your special spot, all we're going to do hopefully is just relax. Eventually, you might be able to remove the blocks. Eventually, you might be able to release and just allow the upper body to release without holding onto anything on the hand, under the hands. You can hold on to your elbows. And again, see if you're using muscles in the neck you don't need. You can nod your head no. You can nod your head yes. And then just relax. If you're holding on to your elbows, your uh, shoulders may be riding into your jawline. If you feel comfortable, you can always rest the backs of the hands on the sacrum to keep the shoulders from dipping into the ears. You might be able to hold on to the hands behind your back and just simply extend through the arms. But as you're here, and it's about five good deep breath cycles from that point of the sweet spot. For me, I'm almost done here. And you may find you're at your very last inhale and exhale. And then inhale, release the hands to the floor if they were on the back of the sacrum or off the mat in some way. Bring the hands somewhere underneath the shoulder. So walking them under the shoulder, we're going to start to lengthen through the legs. So if you can have like this half lift positioning where you're up on the tips of your fingers or maybe with the help of the blocks, but you're feeling, I'll move to the side. You're feeling like you've got that nice long length from the tailbone all the way down the back. 
And here in this half lift, we're just lengthening, feeling still that stability there, engaging the core. And then go ahead and exhale, release the body once more into the fold. And then here, hopefully your hands are either on the blocks or on the mat. And all we're going to do is start to pivot in the heels. Now, you can start to pivot the toes in a little bit more and the heels in if that feels better. But usually one pivot in of the heels is good. And then you start to lower the hips downward. And then here, you may need your blocks to help you. And you can grab a hold of your blocks. Your heels will lift. And you might need to bring the hands down in front of you. You can bring the blocks underneath the heels to help if your heels do not meet the floor. Your hands can be in front. They may need to have blocks as well as have the heel supported by the block. If that is good, we're just trying to release through the arches, through the Achilles heels, and eventually, if you're able to bring the heels all the way down, you can have a deep squat. Now, if you're not used to squatting, you're probably ready to come up. So if your hands are on the blocks, we're gonna go ahead and lift the hips slightly and walk the hands down. And now you should be close enough to the mat to just bring the shins down. And if you're able to sit on your heels, this is a great time for you to do so or to use a block if you need a little support, if you need to meet the mat, if you need to have something between you and the hips and the heels. Could be a block, could be a bolster, could be a rolled up blanket. But if you're able to, we're eventually sitting upright. So your toes are not tucked, but if you need to tuck them, you can lift forward and just bring the uh, toes to stretch a little bit. And you can stay in hero here. You don't need to be upright. But now we're moving into our hero pose. And some of you may have a blanket in between the heels and the hips. Some of you might have your toes untucked and the hips directly on the mat. But when you're there, you're just breathing, keeping upright in the spine, shoulders stacked above the hips, the chest is lifting with each inhale, core is slightly engaged. And relax, shoulders, elbows nice and heavy, nice and relaxed arms at the side. You can always cup the palms so that they're facing upward. And then to come out of this, we're just going to move the hands in front of us, lift up, and bring the hips to the side. We'll go ahead and bring our legs out in front of us. And this is our staff position now. So just sitting upright, we're looking towards removing the flesh. You can move your gluteal flesh <laughs> off from the sides. You can rock a little bit on the sits bones until you feel like you've got both uh, sits bones evenly distributing the weight, supporting the weight of your upper body. I'm going to turn to the side so that you have the benefit of a view to help you with your staff. We're looking at this 90 degree angle here. The upper body stacked on top of the hips. So notice where you're feeling your torso. If you're um, deeply flexed, you might find that the torso is uh, chest leading in the front. And you just simply need to be nice and tall and bring the spine back towards the back. And hopefully, you'll just have the spine sinking into the bowl, into the pelvic bowl, just like that. And one good thing uh, uh, to take note of is a tucking of the chin. If you're constantly on the computer with your phone, we have this habit of curving the upper body. So we're just trying to lift up and simply placing the spine 
above the pelvic bowl will help us to bring the upper body in, but then just tucking in the chin will help to bring the ear over the shoulder so that we're completely upright. To make sure we're not caving in the back, we're leading with our chest. We're opening up through the chest, rotating the shoulders back and down, just like we did in our uh, warm-ups at the beginning. So as you can feel the inhale lifting up with the chest, and with the exhale, a slight engagement of the core. Next thing we'll do is we're going to bend the left knee and externally rotate the left hip, bringing the sole of the left foot to rest somewhere on our left, our right thigh. You want to avoid the knee area. See if you can just have the heel somewhere at the thigh area. If that's too difficult, it may be at the calf and that's okay. You probably have a very high lifted knee and you can bring a, a block to rest there. Maybe it might be better illustrated with this other foot since I'm situated this way. But it's okay to have a block on a high setting sort of supporting this knee as your hip is opening up. So all we're looking for is that external rotation, sort of like when we were in tree. And once we're feeling the length in our legs, and our left knee will be lifted or not, just depends. But as we're here and we've got that openness in the left hip, we're going to be nice and tall here. Feel as if you've got the string pulling you upwards with the inhale. And then lifting up the left arm as well. Let's go ahead and exhale. The whole torso just moves. The center of the torso moves towards the right. It's not that deep of a twist. We're just turning until we stop. So that now we can hopefully lower this left arm and have the back of the left hand resting on the right side of your right leg. It's just a slight twist. We're going to inhale tall once more and then turn just the gaze. So what we did was we twisted from the bottom of the torso at the beginning and we brought our chest to move towards our edge. And then with that very last breath and turn of the gaze, we're using the upper part of the body along with the neck to kind of finish off that twist. Nice and deep. Breath in. Nice and deep breath out through the nose. Couple more breath cycles. See with the very last exhale if you can land the eyes to the right side of your vision. And then with the next inhale, let's bring the eyes back. The gaze is going to be in line with the chest. We're going to release the hand and start to move the chest towards the center. Return it to center, both at shoulders at the same time. And then we can inhale. You can help to guide this left knee upwards as we're lengthening the left leg and allowing that to land. Go ahead and tap that out. We'll do the same thing with the right leg. Situate the gluteal flesh away from the sits bone so you're nice and supported. And then we'll go ahead and inhale nice and tall, bending the right knee and then exhaling to draw the right sole of the foot along the left leg, hopefully at about the thigh level, but you can bring it down to the calf if you need to. Give yourself a little bit of time. Oftentimes it's just a little bit of uh, gravity work for me, honestly. But if you have to, put a block there. Sometimes we're just at that spot where our body needs to feel supported before we can remove that support and see if that helps us to release a little bit more. So once you found that sweet spot there, and again, we're making sure we're not leaning into one hip bone or the other. Here I can feel more of my weight towards my right hip. So we want to evenly distribute. It just means that I'm leaning more towards that. So I'm just going to right myself a little bit. And once we feel we're, we're back on track with our support of the sits bones, we can inhale the right arm up, nice and tall, gentle tuck of the chin to be nice and long from the tailbone all the way up the uh, crown of the head. And then we're going to exhale, start to turn and allow the right arm 
to come on down and let the right um, back of the hand of the right hand land on the left side of your left leg. Mine is at my thigh, but maybe yours might be by the calf. It doesn't really matter too much. You just want to make sure that you've got enough of a twist at the lower belly area that the back of the hand fits nicely. One more deep inhale, and then just turn the gaze towards the left. And here we're just going to breathe. See where your left hand is resting. You can play with the positioning of the fingers of the left hand, left palm. If it's touching the mat, it just might be a little more of a twist, a little bit of a release for the inner left forearm. And we're taking, again, about three deep breath cycles from that point where you found your special spot. Should be three to five, no more. And as you finish up your very last breath cycles, we'll inhale nice and tall and bring the gaze, the hand to release. And then the chest together, once it's all back, can come together back towards the center. And then inhaling to help this right leg up and extending that right leg nice and long. You can tap out the knee, you can tap both of them out, wiggling the toes. See if you can bring the to uh, big toes to go forward, back toes, alternately forward and back. And then we're going to use both of these legs in bending the knees, coming into our butterfly. And here, it's just sitting upright. And you're probably gonna take about three to five breath cycles just to find your edge in this point here. But many of us have really tight hips, so Again, we're trying to feel as if we've got even distribution of weight on both sits bones. If you're leaning to one side or the other, just rock until you feel like that center of gravity, even distribution of weight. And then as the soles of the feet meet, you might have more of a diamond shape. If this is as uh, far as bending the knees to bring the soles of the feet together that you can. But as you're opening up, we're drawing the heels closer towards the groin. So your diamond-shaped legs may become more of this really, I guess, butterfly shape. And the toes don't have to touch, but you can have them. You can bring your hands to rest gently on them if that feels good to you. But eventually, as we find that sweet spot in our uh, butterfly, we're hopefully finding the uh, point where we can open up the hips Feeling nice and tall, we're going to inhale. Feel as if you're breathing length in the spine through the crown of the head, like a string is pulling from the crown of the head. And then hinge with the next exhale from the hips, just leading with the chest. And as you can see, I'm barely folding forward. This is about where I am now. And I don't know about you, but many of us, if we are just not, um, you know, as flexible as we used to be, don't be surprised where you are right now. Eventually, we're hoping to bring the chest to lay on our feet, on a bolster, on some blocks, but eventually, we wanna hinge at the hips and rest something on our chest. And for some of us, especially me, <laughs> it could be that you're just upright with a slight hinging at the hips, that's okay. Then at this point, when you've hinged no further, you're at your sweet spot and you can just relax the upper body. Could be that you have blocks situated to help you support your head. Sometimes it feels nice to have gravity help to release the neck by just simply letting it hang in the air. But we don't want you to rest your chin on your chest or to feel an overextension to the back of the neck. So you may, if you feel that it's just hanging out there, eventually you might be able to bring some support to the brow line if that's starting to, to uh, wear on the back of the neck. And of course, if you have glasses, you do want to take those off. But in our butterfly, after that sweet spot is reached, we're looking for five to 10 breath cycles right from that 
sweet spot. And I've been talking for a while, so you're at least hopefully halfway through. And again, the breath cycles, the shorter number being really nice, long breath cycles, the pauses in between, the ujjayi breath, the sound of the waves, the back of the throat, or it could be shorter ones if it's a longer number. Maybe they're 10 short breaths. Just spending a little bit of time here. And when you're ready to come out, you start with the support of the head. Lift the head, bring the hands underneath the shoulders, start to walk them there if you need to, to help lift up the chest. I didn't hinge very deeply today, so I didn't have very far to go. But for you, you wanna make sure your body is lifted upright, and then when you're back upright, you can start to bring the legs back together. You can help guide the knees back up, and then lengthen through the legs. You can tap those out. We're making our way to our back. If you have a bony back, a nice blanket to support the back has always done me well. But if you're comfortable on a nice uh, concrete floor like this one, go for it. And as we're just leaning, laying down, and you can come down to your back, um, however is good for you. Each of us has our own little thing. We're gonna get very comfortable for the next five minutes. And just imagine laying down and just feeling supported for the moment. Savoring that. You may feel this uh, hip area really tight, so give yourself some time to kind of unwind. If you're still holding on to glutes or you find that a calf or a shoulder is lifted, you may still need to relax some. So just focus back on the breath. And I'll be sitting upright to mind the time. But in our final Shavasana, if any thoughts should come up, if any noises, if anything breaks your concentration, that's okay. Just note it and then let it go with the exhale. Allow yourself to return to the breath. Soften the space between the eyebrows. And we'll awaken at the sound of three bells.
bringing the mind back to the body. Take note of sounds outside the room, sounds within the room, and finally back to the breath. Notice the air as it enters the nose, the air perhaps a little warmer as it exits the nose. And as you reconnect to the body once more, I encourage you to wiggle your fingers, toes. You can hug in the knees and rock from side to side. Avoiding the center spine, you can use that momentum of rocking forward to back. And find yourself back up in an easy seated position. You can also just roll to your favorite fetal position side and using your hand and your arm, helping yourself back up to an upright position. And feel free to come back uh, seated upright with one leg folded in front of you, one shin out in front of you, or with your legs uh, straight, straight out, extended out in front of you like we were sitting in staff. But we'll be ending our class with a simple breath exercise. It's the uh, Nadi Shodhana uh, breath exercise, which is essentially just an alternate nostril breathing um, exercise to help balance the sides of our body and also bring a little more energy as we've uh, woken up again, maybe for the second time today. So bringing the left hand into our chin mudra, it's just a hand position of the index finger resting on the thumb, allowing that to rest on your, your left thigh. Right hand in some uh, form of bringing down the two fingers at the mount of the thumb for Vishnu Mudra, which is basically going to allow us to close the right nostril with our right thumb, left nostril with the right ring fingertip. If this is too awkward, you can always just bring the two fingers to rest on the brow line and close the right nostril, left nostril like so. So we'll go ahead and just sitting up nice and tall. Let's go ahead and inhale through the nose, nice and tall. Closing the right nostril, let's exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close, exhale through the right. It's a slow, controlled exhale, engaging the core, drawing the belly button to the spine at the bottom of the exhale. And then inhale. Feel the chest lift, feel the rib cage expand, crown of the head lifting towards the ceiling. Close, exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close, exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Close, exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close, exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Close, exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close, exhale through the right. Inhale through the right. Last round, exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close, exhale through the right. Go ahead and release the right hand. Release both mudras. Just let the breath come back to its natural state. And then bringing hands to heart center. Thank you so much for joining us here at the ACC Community Room, Zoom Room, Facebook Live, and Instagram. <laughs> and uh, I hope you feel so much better today, more like yourself. And we'll see you next time. Namaste.
And if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, I'm more than happy to stick around for the next uh, five to whatever minutes. Thank you so much. This is Betty. I want to uh, expand on sitting. Okay, Betty, do you have your, um, your uh, video on? Yes. Okay, let me take a look. Is there any way that we could get uh, Betty's uh, screen to show up as she's talking? And if there's, um, here, I don't need my socks right now, but let me just grab this over here. Can put this back. Hi, Betty. Hi. So, um, when we moved from the floor, from standing positions to the floor, we kind of um, like made our way down to the floor using squats. How was the, How did that work for you? I hesitate to do that. Um, even standing, um, there were some points where balancing is an issue. Yes. So when lifting the, uh, the feet up, for instance, and circling, that could be painful. I'm afraid of losing my balance. And for the uh, getting down on the floor, I just imagine myself doing it, but I hesitate to try because it, the, the knees are really painful when I bend or when I squat. Okay. So I sort of know if I can adapt the yoga to a sitting position. Okay, so um, I don't have your screen on right now. Is there any way we could get her, like, screen up? I see some plants right now. That's her. Uh, oh, okay. Her oh, uh, is there any way to get your camera on? Oh, that's no, a... That's the uh, screen I have. Like video. So I'm hoping to see what your range of mobility is with just the standing position. But anyhow, um, I can't see you right now, so if I'm... If I understand you correctly, just when we were doing the warm-ups where we were uh, balancing on one leg, that was difficult for you? Yes. Okay, so next time if you are in that position, you can have a chair or you can be next to a wall so that you can always like reach out to the wall, right? So sometimes what I've had, um, I'm just going to go off camera and bring a chair over. I. Uh, I know that you can incorporate chair. If you have an issue of balance, having the chair next to you, but you see how this is moving? You want to somehow or other get a stable chair. So if you're on carpet, that's not going to be an issue, but if you're on here, like a, a linoleum floor like we are, you would want to have at least the back legs on the mat, and that'll keep you hopefully from sliding. Right, but even as we're doing the the balancing motions where you have to balance on one leg, you can kind of use that chair here or use the chair on the other side, so that you're not really touching it, but it's there in case you find like you need that stability support. So that's one way of doing it. Um, when you're making your way down to the floor, having the chair there is also great. Now, having the back of the chair, if that helps you to squat. But again, I'm not sure what your, your knee situation is, if that's an injury, a surgery, recovery, or, you know, it's just something that's happened with habitual posturing all these years that it just, you don't have that, that flexibility. I'm not sure what that is. So some of the things to consider as you're doing yoga is maybe to take a chair as part of your yoga practice. So when we're sitting in the chair, you can also do the um, you can also do the exercise. It's just that you're going to end up sitting, and that's part of what will help you, I guess, to keep from um, you know not being balanced. It, but it'll um, help you to at least move along with the breath movement a little bit, and that's all you can really do. So here. When you're standing doing the exercises, you would just be doing them while you're seated and kind of try to do the best that you can. And so, you know, you might be able to go from inner to outer. You might be able to lift up the arm uh, with your hands, the motion of bringing the leg in and then to the outer, in to the outer, or from the outer to the in. So you might be able to do the warmest from a seated position. It's just 
you know, it's going to affect different um, muscles, of course, in those, all those hip flexors um, that we're trying to use while we're standing so that they're not in such a flexed position. But that's all you can do. Um, when we're actually doing the sun salutations, you can do them from the chair without ever getting up. And that would be when we go to a fold, you might be with your feet out in front of you and walking your hands down into the fold and then bringing as much as your, of your belly to rest on your um, thighs as possible. And then you would walk the hands up to come up to mountain, which your mountain would be a chair, a mountain chair, I guess. So then instead of doing this, when we fold forward, you would just be sitting with your legs out, just relaxed, if, uh, you know, uh, maybe a foot in front of you, and just walking it down, avoiding the knees. So this would be an equivalent that you can do. Um, I'm also trying to think when you're going into the walking meditation, um, because when we're going into that, you might just, are you able to do the walking meditation? Okay. So kind of like making the motions with your legs while you're seated? Okay. So that might be where you are, is that you're, you're starting from a seated position and just moving along best that you can. But yeah, the fold would be walking down the legs, coming back up. I'm trying to think of anything else. Like a down dog um, would be bringing the hands out like that so that you would have somewhat of a upside down V. And again, if your legs are really um, in that same position as dog, it would be like the heel is resting on the mat while the uh, toes are flexing towards the body. And that would be kind of like that same positioning of a downward dog like this from the floor. And of course, when you're sitting You've got that flexion here, so you just have to kind of stretch out the legs, stretch out the arms like it's an upside down V. And that would be your version of down dog with you energizing, lifting those arms, lifting the torso up. Because that's essentially what we're doing in down dog is we're feeling that length. We are actually pushing into our arms to help keep our torso you know, upside down. And then I'm thinking when we stand and we're folding, and then we're cueing to actually step a leg back and then the other leg back to be into a high plank. Perhaps at that point, you would turn around. If you're able to, you could bring your hands to the arms of the chair. Depends on the chair. You might need to be down here at the seat of the chair holding on. And what you can do maybe is just feel that. This is also another version of down dog that you could do with the chair bringing the ear somewhere in between the hands. But maybe when we're here, if you're able to, to just uh, bring the shoulders over the wrists. And, you know, it's going to feel a little awkward on the wrists there. So it might be that you just make a, a gentle forward movement of the shoulders towards the wrists, and not exactly over the wrists, because it's a little awkward with the chair. But you can do that, bringing yourself into a high plank this way, or a down dog this way with the use of the chair. And the only thing would be coordinating that chair in the walking meditation. But that might be something that you can do as a sort of like a slower part and a more uh, modified part of the beginning of this class. Would that work for you? Does, do any of those exercises seem um, attainable or reachable? I'll give it a time. Thank you. Okay. Really, yeah. I'll give it a try and see how it goes. All right. And, you know, definitely by the time we get to the second part of the class, if, are you able to lay down on the floor completely? I can. <laughs> okay. Well, it could be that we, um, as long as you, you're in that halfway state, um, while we're st still standing, to just use the chair as a, um, you know, as a part. And again, um, it's not, you don't have to go through all the movements, but it's good to just keep um, 
uh, what is that, uh, keep breathing along with us. And that in itself will help you as well, even as you're moving. If it means you get up and then bring the chair closer to you, turn around, and then come into a down dog, and you'll hear the cues. And that's, that's all we can basically do. Either that or maybe I can do a chair class later on in the, you know, in the schedule, in the curriculum of the year. Any chair class would really help you if you have issues of bending down and um, bringing support weight onto the knees. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs>